Alright guys, how's it back again today? I hope you're all doing well and enjoying your day so far. Welcome back to Valorant News and what a couple of days in the Valorant world. The roster mania period is already getting crazy now that we do understand to some degree which teams are going to get partnered for next season. The big question is, with Optics seemingly not making it, where are they going to go? They want to stay together as a team. Is an organisation such as 100 Thieves going to drop their entire roster and pick up the entire Optic team? Very much into it, your thoughts in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new as always. I'd greatly appreciate it. It really helps out the channel. Thank you very much indeed for doing that. We're loads of new subs yesterday. Let's keep on going. As even as Bosa says here from Fnatic, the Valorant scene right now, of course, um, I mean, yeah, getting dropped, getting ready to go, looking for team posts. Thought this is very well done. But um, yeah, some big organizations, Cloud9, Loud, they're through. BBL, of course, are in. Paper Rex, potentially, but we'll see about that one. And then, yeah, TSM, gone. Optic, gone. All this absolute madness going on. So, firstly, on the Fnatic side, Mystic has actually been benched from the team. I believe that they signed both and Durka to very long-term deals recently, Fnatic. And we know that they got in, so like um, in the European side, it was pretty much went as expected, to be honest. It was the North American region, which is absolute chaos and remains that way to this day, because we believe today or tomorrow might be the day where Riot officially confirm which organizations actually got through, but we, we believe we still understand it. The APAC region, though, is actually very much still up in the air, but Mystic has been benched by Fnatic. He's looking for options now. Like, um, I mean, yeah, they've decided to get rid of him effectively, so they're building a new team. Now, that's the thing with Fnatic, like even teams that are pretty good like Fnatic, they will make at least two changes. I think like all of these rosters will have to consider their options because there are just so many players on the horizon right now and on the market to potentially be acquired. This real quick from Kenzie, actually, I believe more along the kind of APAC region, but I'm saying that some of the rumors that are going around are false. So whether this refers to what we're seeing in the North American size and whether some of this is actually not true and Optic have made it after all, I kind of doubt that. But um, look, I suppose we'll see because of course, I just wanted to kind of mention this to confirm the fact that these are rumors we don't know yet until maybe later today which teams are actually confirmed and speaking of the APAC side T1 of course as an organization where Steel is part of that have brought on a fair few kind of Korean players and coaching staff over the last few months they may well have got a spot somewhere you would expect them to as Steel says excited for 2023. Now if T1 were to get a spot in the APAC league in let's say Korea then um, you know Steel I guess would have to move out there right but just because he says excited for 2023 makes me think that he knows they may well have got a spot somewhere or another. So that's pretty cool stuff. Now, let's talk G2 because I'm sure you guys were talking about this in yesterday's comments section. Absolute madness of a situation where, um, well, G2 after like working so hard, the entire team, I'm sure, putting all the effort into getting a spot in franchising and doing all that for then, you know, Carlos to do the whole Andrew Tate thing and then double down on it on Twitter and then Riot saw that and say, yeah, we're not doing this. We're calling off our associated with G2. Absolute madness, right? But um, and even as Rob says here, so many thoughts and words. This is the North American manager for G2. Not enough characters, but just know 180 people gave their heart to a brand daily and there is someone on the other side of the screen. So maybe saying like, look, don't give uh, these guys trash for not getting into partnership. It's kind of more about, you know, one man that maybe made some questionable decisions and now G2 aren't part of the, well, clearly the franchise link for next season, it seems right now, all across the board. So, I mean, yeah, I'd be frustrated if I was Rob or anyone working with G2 that have put all this months of time to try and, you know, building up to the point where you can get into the franchise league, working with them to try and get an NA spot, which is great achievement on their side anyway, to actually make that happen as it was apparently going to happen, and um, then for it to all get cancelled in the last minute on the actions pretty much of one guy. I'm still kind of mind blown this became as big of a deal as it did, but I mean, like, if Carlos didn't go for that whole, like, double down tweet that he did on, like, I party with whoever I want or whatever, like, if he didn't go down that route and he just kind of kept it quiet, then people, like, it would have blown over, right? But, yeah, I guess he doubled down, like, the organisation forced him to respond and replied to it, and then all of a sudden, Riot is saying, no, we don't want you as partners anymore. So, like, crazy situation, to be honest. Now, um, this was also worth mentioning here, because apparently the third Brazil spot was going to go to NIP. Now it's gone to MIBR. So, um, I think it's going to be Loud, of course, Furia, and then NIP slash MIBR was the third option. MIBR now seems like the most likely option. So, yeah, Pajamas, of course, didn't make it in the end. NIP, unfortunately. Now, before we move on, this is also a big, like, there's been so much happening, but this is another big deal that I did just want to run through for you guys. Changes to Pearl that were announced and kind of revealed into the game yesterday. So we've been talking for a little bit now. Okay, look, how good really is Pearl? It doesn't need some changes. Now, I think the B site has been most people's complaints here. But pretty much what they've done, and I'm sorry my laptop's a little bit slow here, like, uh, so they, well, it scrolls kind of slow. But you guys get the picture, right? They've changed, effectively, they've simplified lots of elements of this map. They've actually added this kind of, um, well, small element here and changed the staircase somewhat. This, for example, in mid, this corner is now non-existent. There's a thing there instead. And also, like, this other element of mid, they've removed this entire section of the map. So you've only got one part. 
part. So it simplifies it to some degree. I guess they want to make it somewhat easier to play. This wall is now lower, so you can't hide behind it like you used to be able to. And there's also this change in mid, where it now looks a fair bit more like what used to be on split, for example, rather than what it used to be. So mid map is generally rather simplified nowadays. There are also some changes to the link to B. For example, this part now looks like this, with a, where this box getting smaller. And there's also some changes to this section with the way the boxes are currently being placed. So, I mean, yeah, they're changing a few things around. Nothing major has really happened. I mean, look, these are semi-major to some degree, but really it's just removing cubby holes and like weird spots and stuff to make the angles simpler to deal with. Like, um, is that really what they should have done or the best decision? Who knows? But um, I think a lot of people are still complaining about the B site, right? And they'd like to see some changes over there that haven't really been addressed in these changes. But thought it was cool to see that they're trying to address some concerns regardless. Now, let's dive into the 100T stuff. I mentioned in last night's video right at the end that 100 Ts were rumored to have got in. George Geddes, just as I put the video live, also did a tweet that said, yes, 100 Thieves have made it. They've secured partnerships. Sen, Cloud9, NRG, 100T. We don't know the fifth. Some are saying evil geniuses, but it's not going to be Optic or TSM to our present understanding. 100T are in. Optic are gone. TSM are gone. Of course, we can speculate why. Like, um, you know, ownership concerns, questions about, like, you know, crypto or whatever. But I'm not really sure that's so valid because I think Cloud9's like, biggest sponsor is, you know, crypto company, as a lot of esports organizations seem to be nowadays, right? So we can speculate on the reasons, but, um, you know, the outcome seems pretty much the same regardless. And even actually, as FNS says, put up, well, he puts on Instagram right here, as he says, I couldn't be more proud of the team and my growth the teammates have shown during the time. I don't know how next year will shape up or if we'll even be together. But to me, this is the best lineup in Valorant history, without a doubt. And it was a genuine pleasure playing alongside everyone. So like at last, we want to thank the Green Wolf having our backs, etc. So um, yeah, really interesting stuff from him, actually, because he kind of says, look, we don't know if we'll be together next year, which kind of implies, well, he wasn't sure they were going to get franchising in the first place. And now they're seemingly not. And also, will they be a roster next season? Because like every organization in the world probably wants yay right now. And if they can get it, they'll probably try. But I would expect the team wants to stay together. And um, actually, for some reason here, Ye's uh, kind of at hasn't updated, but he's now got the really clean at Ye kind of Twitter, out, which I thought was pretty cool. But um, I mean, yeah, of course, there was this talk yesterday from FNS saying that Soms now get a spot the streamer on NRG, and Ye has not yet. So everyone wants Ye. I'm sure people want players like Mar, Crashies, like that entire Opti team is going to be in pretty hot demand. Now, the team wants to stay together, of course. They had great results this season. They can probably repeat that next year. First, second, third at three international tournaments. That's an incredible level of consistency that they delivered. And um, of course, that's the question. What are they going to do? Of course, they're not going to Opti aren't just going to send this team of five into the Ascension side and make that happen. But um, even as FNS says, picking up four players in a coach for Ascension League, of course, he's just joking around here because like they want to stay together, Optic, but they're not going to be playing under the Optic band. That means, are another team in the franchise league in North America going to pick these guys up as an entire roster of five? Or will they say, like, look, we'll pick up four of your guys, but uh, we want to have our IGL. We don't want FNS. We want a different IGL or whatever, right? Like, who knows what they're going to do, but it creates a really interesting dynamic here. So many have speculated now already which organization is actually going to do this if any because like I expect all these five guys to be in the league next season in the franchise league but of course they won't be with Optic so um you know what do other organizations do and even uh, you know this one from FNS I met the criteria to be selected but I wasn't right so uh, that's, I'm sure how Optic feel at the moment it's unbelievable these organizations are missing out now the big question has been about 100T Sentinels right like they're not going to get rid of 10s or whatever right? I'm sure like a lot of their guys are going to stay the same TSM were interested in the Optic team but they also have haven't made it. Cloud9, you know, could be a consideration there as well. Like, um, of course, well, NRG might make it as well, but they've got some star pieces to build around also, and they probably don't want to get rid of their entire team. So maybe Cloud9 is an option, but also, well, 100 Thieves could be. Now, 100 Team did a great job, right? They built this team last season. I really like Derek and Bang and Asuna and these players on the team, but um, of course, if you're 100 T and you're like, well, the entire Opti team is available for purchase, like, um, and especially because, you know, Hex and Nadeshot, you know, they've got a relationship going on there for many years maybe there's a world in which they can make this happen. So I don't know if this will happen. Like if I'm 100 Thieves, I really want to keep Asuna and, and Bang and Derek and build around these guys. Obviously Stella and Will as well, good players, but maybe there's upgrades that you could potentially go for. But like, um, I don't know if I want to do that if I'm 100 Thieves. And if I'm 100 Thieves fan, like do you want to get rid of Asuna and these guys? Right, you're probably not, right? But at the same time, if the opportunity is there to get the Optic team, then do you do it? So even as Derek says, listen guys, it doesn't matter if we make it through, Optic is free agent. So, um, you know, like even if 100 Thieves make it, he's saying, look, I expect to get dropped for the Optic team, which maybe is a reasonable expectation, but um, it would be crazy to see it happen. I'll see you in the Ascension League, he says. So, I mean, yeah, remarkable scenes. And even Chet says this, kind of joking around to Sean Gares, but he's kind of joking the fact that like, well, look, I'm going to be replacing you as well. Sean Gares, out the door you go. I'm coming in. So like, I'm, I'm 
sure Chet's going to get a spot somewhere as a coach, but it won't be with Optic because Optic apparently aren't in the league. And as he says here, Chet already came in the 100T chair. So yeah, what do you guys think about this, right? And of all these organizations, who would you, if you were the organization kind of a general manager, would you try and sign Optic? Would you not? Would you sign Yay and like maybe keep some of your own players? Like, um, or is this Optic team going to have to split up? Because we've kind of seen this in the past in other leagues, let's say Call of Duty, for example, when E United, the World Championship winners in 2019, they had a great roster of five, but their organization didn't make it and their team entirely split up going into next season. Like their players ended up on like three different rosters, four different rosters going into next year, even though they were the best team in the world and could have got picked up by an organization, but um, that didn't happen. At least together, it happened individually. So that might be what happens here. I actually think that might be marginally more likely that Optic actually ends up breaking apart here rather than a team buys their entire run out. But uh, that could, of course, still happen. So, um, I mean, yeah, Zeltis and Shanks kind of joking about this as well. Definitely enjoyed your thoughts in the comment section below. It continues to be an incredibly chaotic and hard to read situation. And just speaking of Yay here, I thought I'd mention this and Will wanted to close out the video. This is all time VCT sat international event wise. And uh, yeah, top 10 players in kills per game. Dirk at 10s, Yay is right up here as well. Many players from so many different organizations and teams here. And um, that's why some of these guys even cry, right? I haven't even mentioned X at the last couple of days. They're certainly not getting in, like to our understanding. And therefore, Cryo, like people are going to want him. People are going to want, uh, you know, Zekin, right? So absolute mess. Very much enjoyed to your thoughts in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you are new. Take care and I'll see you next time.